certainly I think anybody that uh, on the unrestricted side, if, if we if we're going to have those conversations, I think once you get to July one, it opens up the field to the other 31 clubs. So um, anybody on, on that front that we're looking to bring back, I think we're and we're having conversations with all of our people at varying varying depths just to get an understanding for where they're at. I think it would be remiss and on, on my on my end not to have those types of conversations with them just to get a sense of where they're at in the marketplace, having been this my first month here. Um, with the restricted free agents, we have a deadline of, uh, of the 30th, so I believe that puts us at next Thursday at 5 o'clock to whether we want to qualify them or, or not. Uh, Valtteri, they had been having conversations with his people uh, prior to me coming here, and, and I was familiar with him from his time in the American League and playing against the Marlies and, and uh, then and going through the evaluation of him. So uh, that one was, uh, was good to get done with Simo Noren and his agent and Eric Heasley uh, here on, on our staff. Kyle, you've had a few weeks to analyze this roster now. Mm -hmm. um, didn't make the playoffs last season, still a lot of talent. How far away, realistically, do you think this team is from being a legitimate cup contender? And do you think in the next couple of months you will have the ability and the resources to make them one? Um, I think the, the major resource that we have, we haven't gotten the, unless I've missed it on the walk over here, we haven't gotten the final salary cap, uh, the upper limit numbers and lower limit numbers. But the, the asset that we do have right now is we have, we have cap space and um, you know, nearly $20 million in cap space or, or slightly more. Uh, obviously, some, we have some, some big needs that we need to fill using that. But what I've seen in the marketplace is that also puts us in position to acquire players from other teams that are, are looking to uh, shed salaries either to become cap compliant outright or uh, different players they want to resign of their own or they have different needs that they've identified. And so this the market has been that way really, I think, since uh, since the pandemic began and, and the cap went flat where each summer um, teams can either pay a premium to offload people um, or they can try to find a fit um, where maybe there's a team that, that uh, believes it's close to contending or wants to contend can take on players that can still bring in good value without giving up a lot other than giving up their cap space. So that's really the focus on it now. I, I, don't, uh, I don't believe unless we're adding a, a very um, impactful younger player that we're going to part with our younger assets, meaning you know, like the Owen Pickerings of the world or our first round picks uh, as we as we move ahead here. I think we have to build up the system. Um, but that said, I think we're, we're in a good spot and fortunate that the cap has remained flat uh, because uh, it allows us to to uh, take on people from other clubs that can bring us good value and, and have us push to contend. Um, hey, Kyle, yep. is a buyout a possibility with any of your players this summer, or do you not <laughs> want to go that route? I'm not a big buyout uh, fan. We never we did it in Toronto once, and I think it was one of the buyouts where because the player was under 26, it actually gave us a cap benefit for the year and added to our salary cap by 600 or so thousand dollars. And we kind of knew that when we acquired that player. It was right during the kind of height of our rebuild. Uh, I just think that there are more creative ways and, and better ways, especially in this environment where. Uh, if you have contracts that you view as as problematic or you're not getting great value from them, that you can move them on or you can try to um, get the you can I think the one thing I don't want to do is get into you know four you see some of the buyouts they you know whether they go two or four or eight years down the road um, you know, and we had that situation in Toronto on a retention trade it was to Pittsburgh with Phil Kessel where you're you're looking at it seven years on down the road and you still have that space in a, in a salary tight hard uh, salary cap environment as limiting you. So uh, I think with regards to buyouts, I've, I've, I've always believed that you try to find a more creative solution and it's a last resort and I, I don't feel that we're at that point right now.